Welcome back to another tutorial. We're going to show you how to actually manipulate your box in Inkscape. Again, the first thing you should always do after importing is going to File, Document Properties, making sure your display units are in the unit that you are familiar with, inches. Units here are in inches. And notice the width and height are your maximum size for a workpiece that can fit into our laser cutter. For us, it's 36 inches by 24 inches. Then go ahead and close that out. There is my workpiece, 24 by 36 inches. And there is my laser cut plans on my workpiece. So a few things that I want to do is I want to change what kind of images that I can put on here. Now first I need to kind of figure out what I'm staring at here. So this is going to be the top, back side, and the lid of the, sorry, the bottom, the side, and the lid of the box. This is going to be the face of the box. Now how do I know that? Well you have to sort of look first at the Boxy website. Let's just pull that up again real quick. And I'm going to scroll over that box again just so I can get an idea of what that box is going to look like. And if you can look at this image, I'm not sure if it's going to stay there if I move it, and it will not. If I look at that front face, it is flat, and it has finger joints all along the bottom left and right, and uh, it's flat on top. It's flat on the bottom, then you have a curve, rounded curve with a flex hinge around one corner, and then a flex hinge around the other corner. Now ours is taller than this box, so this back part that you see all the way to the right of the screen is going to be taller. And then you have a flat top with the lid and um, a couple of little finger holds, uh, a couple of uh, spots there to grab onto. So that's what we're seeing right here in this box. So that is the little finger holes, so that's going to be the lid of the box. So when I want people to open this, I have to think about how they're going to actually interact with the box. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just first put a logo um, along this. Well, actually the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to put some words. So some of the words that they're big fans of are advocating, educating, let's spell it right, that would be good, and connect. Fonts that they like, of course, are some nice clean fonts, Garamond, Arial Narrow, so let's try some of those. Try to find here. There it is. Change all of those to Garamond. And as a reminder, you know that right now we're making fonts because if you look at the cursor, it is changed to a little uh, crosshairs with an A. Remember, if I choose something else over here, such as a circle, notice. It changes to crosshairs with a sphere or a circle or ellipse. And same thing with the rectangle. So let's go back to this. And so now anything that I do when I click is going to be a place where I can add a font. See that? Any place that I add, even if I do a box, it's going to be a way of adding fonts there into that little box. All right. Now if I want to move some stuff around to get rid of it, I need to either click over here, or of course I can just hit the space bar and I'll get back to my normal cursor. There we go. <clears throat> so I'm going to take these words and I want to pepper these words all along this side here. I'm going to do that on both of these sides. Now you can either change the font size by double clicking there and changing the font size here. For example, I'm going to make this a lot bigger, 75, nice and big. Or you can grab this corner and change it like that. Now how do you keep the ratio, because watch closely. If I don't press a special key while I'm doing this, 
I can completely mess around with that ratio. I'm going to hit Control Z to undo. So here's what you do. You hold down the Control button. As you hold down the Control button and drag, the ratio will stay. I'm going to hit Control D. There we go. So that's just a quick example of what that might look like. Now if I wanted to take that and just simply duplicate that and put the same thing right here, I'm going to highlight all of this, click, hold, and drag, highlight all of it, hit Control D to duplicate everything, and then just grab that entire thing and put it right over here. Now I'm going to show you this. What if I wanted to make sure that everything was exactly in the same level? Then I might just grab everything, oops, hit duplicate and take my arrows and move them over that way. Another option though is if I look up here, notice the Y isn't changing, the X is. So what if I want to put it right over here in this area? I can just maybe change that to something like 1.5. There we go. So now I know they are still exactly aligned. And align 